What's up guys, welcome to Distraction House. My name is DJ and this is the first episode of Off Meta, a series where I take unpopular or just generally terrible unique items, skills, or game mechanics, center a build around them and try to make them good, or at least meh for as cheap as possible. Uh, today we have Divinarius, a nice simple spell crit dagger that gives life and mana on kill. Now the build ended up being this weird life, energy shield evasion, two curses mess that made leveling super hard. And just a quick disclaimer, this character is only leveled to the point where the build could function, so yes, all of my stats are extremely low. The main skill I chose for this was Ethereal Knives, paired with its Threshold Jewel Ring of Blades. Basically, you Lightning Warp or Flicker Strike into the middle of a pack and blast them down from the inside. It's pretty fun, but very risky. Uh, keep in mind of your stun threshold. Alright, so we're first going to go into the gear. Uh, I am using Divinarius. I'm actually using two of them. Uh, you don't have to dual wield them. You can actually use a high energy shield shield if you are having trouble surviving. Um, I am using also a Praxis Ring to keep my mana up and Marilyn's Fallacy for that extra crit. Um, now all of my other gear I actually got for about 1 chaos each. Um, so in total my gear cost about 10 chaos. So it is a fairly budget build. Now I am of course using Ethereal Knives, uh, linked with Critical Strike Support, S Spell Echo, Faster Projectiles, and Increased Critical Damage. Uh, over here are my Curses, I have Warlord's Mark. Um, now Warlord's Mark is, I'm using uh, Ghost Reaver, so Warlord's Mark is keeping up my Energy Shield, um, while the Life on Kill from Assassin's Mark and Divinarius is actually keeping my life up. Now it is pretty unconventional, so you are going to have to use a life flask as well. But for now, it is seem to be uh, seems to be working pretty well. But I doubt it'll be able to hold up as well as it is now in uh, higher tier maps. Uh, over here, I have uh, whirling blades with faster attacks, and then I have uh, flicker strike over here. Now I am using flicker strike to center myself in packs. Um, you don't have to use flicker strike; it's just my preference. You can use. Uh, lightning Warp with Faster Casting, Less Duration, and Rapid Decay as well if your links can support it. Uh, over here I have uh, an Ice Golem uh, with Minion Life Support. Um, and over here I have Cast Wind Damage Taken linked with Ice Nova. Um, now you should be running a Mortal Call linked with uh, Cast on Damage Taken, but it is a little difficult to get uh, two red sockets on Energy Shield Evasion gear. So, um, but if you can, uh, definitely go for that. It's a, it's a much, much better option. I'm just using Ice Nova. You can also use Vortex, um, and that's just to slow down the DPS in the area uh, immediately around you. Um, now I'm also using a, um, a critical strike chance ring here. Now the, the rings um, are pretty, um, you don't have to be using a diamond ring. You can't really be using any type of ring as long as your crit chance is high enough that Marilyn's Fallacy isn't lowering your DPS. Uh, same thing goes with the golem. You don't need to be running the ice golem. Just make sure that Marilyn's Fallacy isn't reducing your DPS if you don't have ice golem on. Another good option would be running the chaos golem um, uh, to reduce incoming uh, physical damage. Uh, and then as for flasks again, you would want to use a, uh, a bleed flask. Uh, a freeze flask is uh, definitely definitely needed in my opinion. Uh, I wouldn't say you need a quicksilver flask, you can definitely swap this one out for uh, an amethyst flask because you, as a hybrid life energy shield build, chaos damage is a very uh, high threat. And uh, you also would want some physical damage mitigation because again this is a build with no armor. Um, I've opted to use a granite flask with a basalt flask. Um, and these two together give me about 76% uh, reduced incoming uh, physical damage. Alright, so looking at the passive tree, I started up the physical and chaos damage side of the shadow start location and then hit some physical and crit damage here, some energy life evasion rating here, and then more crit here. And then as uh, soon as I could, I spec'd into this jewel socket to socket ring of blades. Um, then immediately afterwards I came down here, I uh, hit this physical damage wheel and then void barrier and revenge of the hunted. Immediately after that I came up here and I spec'd into this life energy shield node, right up into this uh, physical damage node, and then this spell crit. 
uh, I came this way, hit this strength node here. Um, you may need to use this, especially if you're planning on running Immortal Call, which you definitely should if you can. Um, and then down here, I came and hit this life energy shield node, um, this uh, cast speed, movement speed node, uh, energy shield, and then came up here and then at level 70 I hit Whispers of Doom and that was of course after I spec'd into Ghost Reaver, Valpact, uh, reduced or uh, or just reduced mana reservation here and here. So get these first before you put on the uh, extra curse. Um, that 16% reduced mana reservation allows me to run Discipline, Warlord's Mark, and Assassin's Mark at 30% uh, of my mana. Um, so I can run all three reserving 90%. Um, something to watch out for is um, while leveling I used the I used Warlord's Mark so I wasn't dying. Um, I could keep my energy shield up that way. Um, but it made the leveling process a lot slower I would say. Um, especially in Dried Lake I was actually having a little bit of trouble. Um, so something that I would say is don't run League Stones if you don't know that you can handle them. Um, Breach is a bit risky even though you get a few, uh, you get a bit more XP, um, but Breach can be risky because you can run into a pack or a rare inside one um, that you aren't prepared for and you'll just die and lose 10% of your XP. So um, it is a good idea to not run League Stones in Dried Lake in my opinion for this build specifically. As for the ascendancies, uh, the, you first want to spec into ambush, and then as assassinate, and then for the last two you want unstable infusion and deadly infusion for the uh, extra effectiveness of your power charges. Now before you say anything, yes, you can use this build as a chaos inoculation build, in fact I would recommend you do so. Um, I, that's how I originally designed this character, uh, however I just couldn't recommend it on a budget because the current price for uh, energy from within is super high in Legacy. I'm not sure exactly what the price is now, but when I was building it, it was around 90 chaos. I'll put the current price of energy from within on the screen right now for you, just so you can see. Um, if you are going to convert this to a Chaos Inoculation build, um, you would want to socket energy from within in this socket here to cover these nodes, and in this socket here to cover these three nodes and these three nodes. Alright, now I just wanted to go over some of the uh, main issues I've been seeing this build encounter. Um, now, Hexproof is definitely the, one of the biggest issues here. Um, definitely try to stay away from running any maps that have Hexproof mods, and make sure that you have uh, your mana high enough that you're able to cast uh, Ethereal Knives at least twice before you run out. Um, if you don't have enough mana to do that, a lot of the times I've seen myself um, flicker striking into the middle of a hexproof pack and I don't realize it and then I run out of mana trying to use ethereal knives on them and then I don't have enough mana to use any movement abilities to escape. Um, so that leads to death quite quickly I mean, more often than you'd think. Um, so stay away from hexproof maps. Um, also again physical damage, chaos damage, huge issues. Uh, try to mitigate that as much as possible. Um, also, you want to watch your, your stun threshold. I know I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but I can't stress it enough. Try to increase your life pool as much as possible, because again, flicker striking or tele or um, lightning warping yourself into the middle of a pack, if you get hit immediately, sometimes all of them will just stun you out and you'll, you'll die in a few seconds. Um, so th those are definitely the biggest things that I've seen uh, this build have issues with. All in all, this is a fun, albeit risky build that has a tough time leveling, but pretty decent potential with a little work. Again, run this build with Immortal Call and Chaos Inoculation if you can. Chaos Inoculation gems uh, or jewels are going to be a little bit expensive right now, but again, they're definitely worth it if you can afford them. Now that's it for this episode. If you enjoyed and would like to see more of this kind of thing, consider subscribing. Uh, if you have any suggestions on how to improve this build, I'd definitely love to discuss it with you in the comments. Uh, if you have any suggestion for an off-meta unique skill or game mechanic for me to make a build around next time, feel free to throw that in the comments too. Uh, or you can actually tweet at me with the hashtag offmeta if I actually have my Twitter up and running by the time this video goes up. Uh, but I'll put a link to that on the screen right now once it is up. Um, and I just want to thank you again for wasting your time with me today, and I'll see you in the next video. An end undone.
no matter. The void remains. One more lost world. Insignificant.